tunnels can be layered or encapsulated to deal with situations where NATed connections or firewalls make it difficult to connect to hosts from your current position. In this demo, we have a client machine here. We also have an intermediate machine, which happens to be a Windows server. And we have a web server running a website. Let's assume that you have control over the intermediate machine, but that from your client, you cannot connect to the intermediate machine. Ultimately, you would like to be able to, from your client, tunnel connections through the intermediate machine in order to reach the web server. But you can't even connect from the client to the intermediate machine, much less to the web server. Assuming the intermediate machine can connect backwards to the client, you can set up a reverse connection, then tunnel a SOX proxy through that first tunnel in order to reach any arbitrary host that the intermediate machine has access to. So let's take a look at the first step. Using P-Link or some other SSH client, we create a reverse connection, so-called, because the connection is going to be made from the intermediate machine back to the client, which is dot 31. However, the traffic is going to flow from the client through the intermediate machine. So from the point of view of the connection, the traffic is flowing in the opposite direction. So let's go ahead and set up this machine, this connection now between the client machine and the intermediate host. A note about the syntax on a reverse connection. This is with respect to the traffic flow. So 127.0.0.1 represents the client. So the connection initially is going to be made localhost on port 1022. And the destination is this very intermediate machine itself, which is running at dot 10. And we're going to connect to the SSH server on port 22. We put in the password, and that sets up the connection from the client back to this intermediate host. We can show this by dumping a list of the listening con connections. And we'll filter for those that are TCP and in a listening state. So we see that there is an SSH server running on this client. And that was the connection that we used from the intermediate host to connect back to this client. We see there's a new connection possibility on port 1022. So if we connect to this port 1022, will actually be connecting to the SSH server on the intermediate host. The reason is because we said that the local host client was going to open a port on 1022, which would be forwarded over to the SSH server on dot 10, the intermediate host. So now that that's established, we can use that connection. So from the client, we connect to localhost port 1022. We can set up a SOX proxy through the intermediate host. Put in our password, and we're now logged in over the SSH tunnel to the Windows server. So at this point, we can send arbitrary packets through the SOX tunnel. They will appear to come out of or originate from the intermediate host onto their destination. 
So let's do an experiment. Over here on the web server, we'll set up TCP dump to listen for any traffic that involves host.10, the intermediate server. And back here on our client, we'll run an nmap, but we'll do so through proxy chains. And we'll scan for port 80 on the web server. Before we do that, let's take a look at the end of the configuration file for proxy chains. And we'll see that there's a SOX proxy listening on port 1234, which is the very port that we are tunneling through the reverse SSH connection. So we'll go ahead and run the nmap scan on this single port. And it says the port's open. Let's go back over to the web server. We'll start TCP dump listening for any traffic coming from port.10. And we'll rerun the nmap scan that we already know is going to be successful. So now we can see the packets that arrived from that scan. Recall that we're scanning from the client, which is dot 31. If you take a look at the packets destined for port 80, we find the initial send packet here. From the point of view of this web server, those are actually coming from the Windows server. They're not coming from the client where we ran the nmap scan. So we can see that the packets are being tunneled back through that reverse connection. And from the point of view of the web server, they appear to be coming out of the intermediate host. The intermediate host is acting as a proxy, effectively tearing down and rebuilding those packets before sending them on to their destination.